All right, today I'm going over what Steam OS is. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with Steam, Steam is an online service that will allow you to buy games, download them, and play them all completely legally through one application. Now, Steam is compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux. So now, there have been an increasing number of Steam games that are supporting Linux. In fact, Valve, who developed Steam, has created what's called Steam Play, better known as Proton, which you can easily enable by going into the Steam Play settings and checking a box. Now, of course, it doesn't always work, but hey, it's at least something. Now, Valve is creating their own Linux distro called Steam OS, which is based on Debian, the same distro that Ubuntu is based on. The idea is to create a distro for or PCs acting as game consoles. So basically, it just has Steam pre-installed on it, and then you just go into Steam, sign into your account, or create one if you don't have one already, and buy any compatible games, and then play them right on your PC, which may be in your living room if it's acting as a game console. So now, it's currently still in beta, so I wouldn't recommend this for an actual use case scenario, but hey, I still think it's interesting to go over. Now, before we get into this, I just wanna mention one disclaimer before we start. Not all of SteamOS is open source, because uh, the Steam client itself is proprietary, and also similar to other user-friendly Linux distros, it does ship with some proprietary drivers, which you need if you actually want to play games, which is the whole point of this OS. And also, I'm going to be installing this on a virtual machine, so I'm not going to be able to show you any actual gameplay, so I'd just be aware of that. But without further ado, let's get into the actual installation and use of Steam. OS. All right, so now the website is repo.steampowered.com slash download. And then it'll bring you to this download page. Now, there are a lot of options here, but the only ones we need to worry about are the SteamOS DVD and the SteamOS installer. And as you can see, it's only 1.4 gigabytes in size. So somewhere in between a Debian ISO and a Ubuntu ISO. And as you can see, it hasn't been updated in a while, but I'm sure Valve will get back on top of this project sooner or later. Now, the SteamOS installer is designed to make it easier to flash it to a flash drive. You just extract all the files in it on the root of a flash drive and then boot from it. However, since I'm running this in a virtual machine, I'm going for the SteamOS DVD, and you may want to do that just to simplify the flashing process, assuming you have ISO flashing software, which if you're on Linux, you probably do. But anyway, I'm going to go click on the SteamOS DVD, and then the download will show up right here. Now I've already downloaded this file. I've got it right here in my VMware folder. So I'm going to go fire up VMware, full screen that, create a new virtual machine from the SteamOS DVD, and then we're going to click Next. And the version of Linux I'm using is Debian 9 64 bits, since that's what this is based off of. And I'm going to call it something easier like Steam OS, then hit Next. We really only need 20 gigs for this installation, but anyway, I'm going to hit Next, and then go Customize the Hardware. I'm going to give this two cores, change the network adapter to Bridged, USB controller to 3.1, close that, then click Finish, Close. And then we'll go Auto automatically power on, and then this is the boot menu that it'll give. Now the first option is the automated installer, which will automatically erase your drive and install SteamOS on it, and you don't have to do anything. And there's also the expert install, which will present you a Debian installation screen, which if you're familiar with it, isn't that difficult. I'd say it's really only slightly more difficult than a Ubuntu install if you go for the expert install. And then there's also a rescue mode, which I'm sure is pretty self-explanatory. But anyway, I'm gonna go for the automated install, and then it'll start at the install, and then we just go let it do its thing. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, so now the only prompt it'll give us is this prompt, which asks us where we want to install the Grub bootloader. What we're gonna do here is type slash dev slash SDA, then click continue. And then it'll finish the installation and then reboot the system. Okay, once the system's rebooted, it'll just log us right in and then go and start an update. Now what we gotta do to prevent the system from breaking after a reboot is we've gotta go into TTY mode, which we can do by pressing Control alt f 2 You may have to press Control called FNF2 if you're using a laptop. But anyway, the default login is a desktop for the admin account, and the default password is also desktop, all in lowercase. And now we need to run sudo dpkg reconfigure light dm. 
then type in our password again, which again is desktop, then change the default display manager to GDM3. And don't worry about the last command I just ran. But anyway, while we're here, we might as well create our own user account by doing a sudo add user, our username. In my case, I'm going with Drew, and then set our password. Then under full name, I'm going to put in Drew Howden Tech and then leave everything else as the default values. And we're not gonna delete the desktop user account just to prevent us interrupting the update. But anyway, we just type exit and then get out of TTY mode by pressing Control Alt F7. You might need to press Control Alt Fn F7. But anyway, we just go ahead and let it install the update and it should reboot after that. By the way, we're gonna go turn up the volume and I'll meet you once this is done. Okay, and with that update done, it just went and rebooted the system, and that was a splash screen, as you may have seen back there. All right, and that reboot process actually lasted a while, but anyway, now that we're in, we can just go and log in real quick. Okay, so now what we can do is go to Settings, Displays, then click on our only display in here, then change the resolution to our screen resolution, in my case, 1360 by 768. I know I have a crappy screen resolution, and then we can close out of that. All right, and actually, we we forgot to do we got to get back into our desktop user and this time there is no password we've got to do a sudo add user our username sudo so that way we have administrative privileges and then exit out of this then get back out of tty mode then we can go back to our user account settings then unlock it with our password and then we can go delete the steam os desktop users we can delete their files and same with steam user and there we go so now let's go digging around the file system here i'm curious says to you what version of Nautilus, better known as Files, is. That's what GNOME's file manager is called. And by the way, GNOME is the default desktop environment for SteamOS, and also a lot of famous Linux distros like Ubuntu and Pop OS. It's using 3.14, an old version. But anyway, let's actually go to Steam real quick. Uh, let me actually go check our system processes. See if Steam's even running. Nope. Okay, the Steam's not running. But anyway, let's go check for any package updates. And the more you know, there are actually package updates. Install those. Get it authenticate again. And that update was pretty quick. So with our packages updated, let's try Steam again. Is there any Steam activity? Nope. Let's actually try rebooting again and see if that helps. And thankfully that reboot wasn't nearly as long as the last one. So let's go log in real quick and then try the Steam icon again. Still nothing. Let's try going to Steam from here. Nope. Okay, let's go to terminal and see what's up here. Do an apt search Steam. I know this is using apt since this is based on Debian, which uses the apt package manager. Okay, let's do a sudo apt remove Steam and and sudo apt install Steam to uninstall Steam and reinstall it again. Then punch in our password. Yes, let's do that. Okay, let's just do a top here. And still nothing. I guess we need to add a sudo apt auto remove. Oh, well, it doesn't have the auto remove option. Anyway, I guess that's not working. But hey, this still does work as a general purpose system. You do have the Firefox web browser. Kind of breaks the deal with the SteamOS, making it so that way there's really no advantage to it over installing a general purpose distro like Ubuntu or Linux Mint, more popular with gamers, Pop OS or Minjar and installing Steam on it. But anyway, let's see how all this gaming OS plays YouTube videos by going to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Drew Howden Tech. Because of how big the header bar is on Firefox, it kind of makes it annoying to browse the web on it, which after all, it's meant for a console PC, so I can understand why it's big. It's kind of meant for a TV. And hmm, sound was working here a second ago. I guess maybe it's just some sort of bug with it that stopped the sound from working. But anyway, I don't think we need to see any more of this to know that it's not quite ready for everyday use, so let's go and shut this down. So in conclusion, I think this is a great idea. However, until they work out the quirks with it, there's really no benefit to it over just loading a general purpose distro like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, or actually more popular with gamers, Pop OS or Manjaro, and then just installing Steam on it and then using that as your console PC. Especially with it being in beta and Valve recommending Ubuntu for Steam players. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, found it interesting, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.